So how are you at navigating conflict? Do you avoid it at all costs, stand your ground, or focus on not rocking the boat at work or at home? Do you want to learn how to cool conflict when you find yourself in the heat of it? Well, today I'm going to share with you three simple ways to navigate conflict. Not only do all three of these things cool conflict, they also increase emotional intelligence, empathy, and psychological safety. All right, so the first way to really cool conflict is to understand the roots of conflict. When we understand why we experience conflict, it can actually help us deal with conflict more gracefully. Now, conflict is something that we feel in our bodies. When we experience conflict, our heart rate increases. We feel a flood of energy rush through us. We might feel a flood of anger. We might feel a paralyzing fear. We might want to engage in conflict or we might just want to run away. But conflict is a body response. Now I'm sure you learned about the automatic stress responses we have like fight, flight, or freeze. These stress responses are part of our autonomic nervous system. It's the same part of us that regulates our breathing, our heart rate, and our body temperature. Now this amazing system of ours is also designed to assess threats and automatically respond to them. So for instance, if we encounter a lion on our path, our system will automatically create adrenaline so that we can run. Now, when we feel conflict in our body, it's a sign that we're having a stress response. Our nervous system detected a threat and activated our system for survival. But here's a really important note. Our nervous systems are programmed based on our individual experiences, often as a child. So we associate certain situations, environments, or even personalities as a threat. They remind us unconsciously of an earlier experience. Now today, if you can walk away just with the understanding that conflict is an innate an automatic stress response, this can help you have more compassion for yourself and others who are experiencing conflict. Okay, so the second way to cool conflict is to really practice regulating your own nervous system. Now, when we experience conflict, our nervous system gets deregulated or activated. And in those moments, we want to bring ourselves back to regulation, back to calm, and in a place to navigate the conflict effectively. Now, even if you're not directly involved in the conflict, regulating your nervous system helps to regulate other people's nervous system in the environment. So the best way to regulate your nervous system when you're feeling activated is to practice what I call a mind-body pause. Now, one way to do this is to take a pause and focus on your breathing, right? You're gonna focus on the feeling of the sensations of your breath. So you'll notice your chest expand, your breath moving through your nose and your chest, the sensation of air as it enters or the sensation of air as it leaves your body. So another example is excusing yourself to go to the bathroom and run your hands under cold water, right? Notice the sensations of the water running over your hands. How does it feel on your skin? Notice the temperature of the water or the temperature of your hands. Now the key to both of these examples is the pause and the turning of attention to your body and the sensations you feel in your body. This is a very simple technique, but it will shift your nervous system and the response that you had to conflict. Okay, so the third way to cool conflict is really to practice what I call deep listening. So now we know that conflict is a nervous system response, and we know that when we regulate our nervous system, we can be more calm and we can help other people be more calm. But how do we resolve the conflict? Well, the key is to practice deep listening. Deep listening is about being fully present with the person you're listening to without judgment, reaction, or agenda. Now, it is impossible to practice deep listening when our nervous system is activated. So regulating our nervous system has to come first. But once our nervous system is regulated, we're in a place to truly hear others or even to be truly heard ourselves. Now, conflict arises because something that matters to us is threatened. So listening to what matters to others and what they are feeling makes a big difference in resolving conflict. We can validate their feelings even if we disagree with them. 
Now, deep listening also applies to ourselves as well. Understanding what matters to us in a conflict is important. Knowing what we are protecting or what is a threat to us helps us communicate our needs more effectively. Now, being able to cool conflict is a powerful skill. These three practices will help you get started.